horrifying life of El Chapo's in toughest prisons. The famous Mexican drug lord, Joachim El Chapo Guzman, is being detained in Florence, Colorado. He will serve his life sentence there at the administrative maximum US penitentiary, plus an additional 30 years, according to the judge. El Chapo twice broke out of Mexican jails in 2001 and 2014. This supermax prison, known as the Alcatraz of the Rockies, has never had a prisoner escape since it was established in 1994. So it appears that his stay this time is considerably longer. Like Alcatraz, a supermax jail houses the most dangerous criminals with the utmost levels of security available. In fact, ADX, which is situated in the desert, about two hours from Denver, is also known as the Alcatraz of the Rockies. Many people have called the conditions in ADX torture, and according to Robert Hood, a former warden there, the prison was not built for humanity. I believe that living there day after day is worse than dying, he declared. Let's get started. We are going to see El Chapo's inside life in the toughest prison. Who is El Chapo and why was he arrested? For those who don't know who El Chapo is, here are little insights on who he is and why he has gotten so much fame out of his crime acts. As a teenager, Wahim Guzman Luera started dealing drugs. He started the Sonola cartel in 1989. Over time, transformed it into a hugely successful international drug trafficking organization. Guzman, a notorious criminal with considerable clout, executed daring prison escapes from high security facilities in his native country. One such escape occurred in July 2015, yet he was arrested again in Los Mochis, Mexico, in January of the following year. The drug lord was deported to New York City to stand trial and after being found guilty on several counts, he was given a life term in jail in 2019. But while in prison, Guzman maintained his influence. He was able to run his narcotics operation in large because of the money he received to arrange for conjugal visits. His near mythical mythology in Mexico was already well established. Many towns in his home region viewed Guzman as a Robin Hood-like figure. In 2001, however, he managed to escape from jail using a laundry cart with the aid of paid prison guards. 71 inmates, including the warden, were arrested as a result of the federal investigation. The life at ADX. Except for El Chapo, there is Unibomber Ted Kaczynski, former FBI agent turned Soviet spy Robert Hansen, Philadelphia mod boss Nicodemo Scarfo, and September 11 attack conspirator Zakasia Mosawi are just a few of the prominent criminals housed at ADX. At ADX Florence, El Chapo is serving a life sentence plus 30 years. He is imprisoned there for 23 hours every day in a 7 by 12 foot concrete cell that is soundproof to prevent convicts from talking to one another. A bed, desk and chair are provided in the cell and they are all made of concrete and linked to the walls so that the inmates cannot move them. The only time an inmate is permitted outside of their cell is for one hour every 23 hours while they are being held at ADX. The holding strategy is based on the theory that if people in ADX were allowed to interact, violence would unavoidably break out. Inmates are occasionally required to spend days in their cells because the allotted hour of free time is unexpectedly discontinued. The daily record claims that El Chapo's cell also has a bathroom and a shower space, but the water flow is timed to prevent flooding. Additionally, guards have control over the electricity in the cells. So after a certain period, inmates are denied access to light. El Chapo's prison cell features two doors, an inside jail door and a solid exterior door, which deepens his isolation. There is no view of the nearby Rocky Mountains from the cell's tiny window, which is only four inches wide and 42 inches tall. According to the sources, the limited visibility prohibits detainees from knowing their precise location within ADX. El Chapo is permitted one hour of leisure time in a concrete hole that resembles an empty swimming pool. Three guards accompany the famed drug lord there, where he is permitted to stroll around the pit for exercise. However, it restricts the number of steps to either 10 in a straight line or 31 in a circle, and the hole is constructed to prevent inmates from seeing where they are in the jail. Apart from this, a controversy on the prison has also been reported, like the effects of prolonged confinement and isolation on mental health. As 11 prisoners sued the jail in federal court in 2012, 
on the grounds of alleged chronic maltreatment and inadequate mental health diagnosis. More about ADX prisoners. The most violent offenders in the prison system, as well as terrorists with convictions, reside at the Supermax. They've spent time in jail. They killed workers. They murdered a visitor. According to Hood, they have earned the privilege to serve at Supermax because they are terrorists, spies, and dangerous, violent gang members who cause trouble. A 2012 class action lawsuit against the Bureau of Prisons claimed that some ADX inmates, particularly those with serious mental illnesses, suffer from a fundamental loss of even basic social skills and adaptive behaviours as a result of years of isolation with no direct, unrestrained contact with other human beings. They inevitably find themselves suspicious of other people's motivations and intentions. The lawsuit claimed that many ADX inmates interminably scream and scream and bang on the walls of their cells. Some people mutilate their bodies using razors, glass shards, chicken bones that have been sharpened, writing tools and whatever else they can get their hands on. Many people swallow razor blades, nail clippers, radio and television parts, pieces of broken glass and other potential harmful materials. They do this because they believe death is better than living there, and as a result of this, they start hearing voices and start talking to themselves. In a supermax like ADX, inmates have only time on their hands and little to occupy it. They can borrow books from the library and spend the day reading, or they can drive themselves to exhaustion by performing push-ups. There are writing materials, but according to former prisoner Dussenbury, they aren't actually suitable for prolonged usage. In order to avoid potential injury, the pens used at ADX are not only expensive, but also floppy, short and stubby. The pens are essentially unusable because of how much give they have. Most people say that the ADX facility is mainly built to strip people of their humanity. El Chapo wants an appeal. El Chapo was found guilty of all 10 charges against him on February 12, 2019, following more than 200 hours of testimony from 56 witnesses, including those related to running a continuing criminal operation, conspiring to launder drug proceeds, including using guns. El Chapo was given a life sentence plus 30 years in jail in order to pay $12.6 billion in restitution by Judge Kogan on July 17, 2019. His lawyers started pursuing an appeal of his conviction in 2020 because El Chapo is hoping that an appeal will get him out of the Supermax prison after only a year at ADX Florence. According to the Anadolu agency, El Chapo's team will now request assistance from Mexican authorities to ensure his return to Mexico so he can face justice there. His extradition to the United States after his most recent capture, according to his attorneys, was illegal. Jose Refugio, one of his attorneys, said, We went for legal requests to defend Joaquin Guzman, and all legal procedures were denied. El Chapo is said to be confident in his chances, even as his attorneys continue to work on his appeal. According to CBS Denver, attorney Mario Colon stated, My personal impression is that everyone who is facing a life sentence like that is going to hold on to every piece of hope. He is all about El Chapo, aka the drug lord, and his start to the horrifying life at ADX. If you enjoyed watching this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel and hit the like button.